See you over there. Am I supposed to see you? Yeah. I see questions inside. Hmm? All the questions coming on inside. No, they will be on Facebook, but I wasn't saying the questions. Okay, turn on the Alright, here's what I'm going to do. Can you see this up? Oh, okay, I got you. I'm going to tell my story and give these pillows, and I'm going to open it up for questions. Let me know when you're ready for me to roll. Alright, for sure. Alright, so we'll do it. Do a raw chat. Let me know. Alright, here we go. Let me know when you're ready for me to roll. Alright, for sure. Alright, here we Can I see myself? What's going on, everybody? Can y'all hear us? Can y'all see us? Type in the chat box if you can hear us and see us. You, wait, you want me on screen? Yeah, you on screen. Mm -hmm. Are you on screen, too? Yeah, I got a back and forth thing going on here. Okay, everybody can hear us? Good. Let me turn down this volume on this side. Or you turn down your Oh, well, Mine's off. I'm off. You are. Anybody else? Okay, somebody said they see Andre. Do you see Kendrick? Greg Curtis Jr. Good to see you all. How's everybody Brett? doing? Okay, do they see me or do they see you, Dre? They should see us both. You see two people, one or two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're just making sure all the technical ends are, are properly handled before we move forward because we don't want any glitches to stop while um, I'm giving this webinar. Yes, I can hear and see. Okay, everybody can hear and see. Cool. Good, good. We yeah, have full sure. attendance. So, um, I don't know if, you, if, if Andre, you want to self introduce, you want me to kind of. All right, let's, so let's get this thing started. Like, you know, for starters, let me introduce myself. My name is Andre Brown. I manage a music producer by the name of Rick Rude. And I've uh, been in the game for quite a few years, and, you know, we've had a pretty extensive track record in the business. And uh, I kind of saw music business success as being very necessary because when I, when I first got into business, I would go to conventions and so on and so forth and you know you, you end up spending all this money trying to attend uh, these conventions and stuff to get your music heard and it just wasn't happening when it was all said and done you kinda ended up with um, with a bunch of business cards but not any real relationships and you know you really got nothing accomplished um, how many of you guys have been to some sort of music conference before. Are you guys hearing us here? Oh, you guys can really hear me? All right, Tess, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? I guess we got like a big delay or something. Okay. I can't hear you. Let me know if you can hear me when I'm speaking right now. 
I have. Uh, okay, well, they heard your question. Yeah, it's a big delay. Okay. It appears. Yeah, well, go ahead. Uh, continue, Andre. Okay, so, um, you know, basically, we just want to create an opportunity for you guys to be able to, to get your music heard, get real critiques, but also give you knowledge about the business and how everything works. So, um, again, if you're just joining us, I want you to go to facebook.com slash music business success and like our page. And you'll also see that there is a post um, that says Music Business Success Q&A and this is where we'll be taking all of your questions okay so you know with, with that being said let's go ahead I'm gonna turn it over to Kendrick Kendrick can you know give an introduction about himself you know we'll get into a few things and as I'm as I'm going through you guys questions then we'll go from there in terms of uh, diving into your individual questions, but Kendrick is going to give a little bit of information about himself right now. So, Kendrick? Okay, it seems like it's a delay. Shantae Brown. Check that out. But, Andre, what I want you to do is I want you to type in that Facebook link. Yeah, I did already. You did? It okay. I sent it to them. All right. Well, while we work out the kinks of this delay, it looks like there's a, a little bit of a delay. I'll go ahead and start in the interest of time. Um, my name is Kendrick Dean. I am a record producer, songwriter, um, and I've been in the industry uh, on a professional level doing records since 2004 uh, when I first moved to Atlanta. My background is very interesting. Um, I've come from uh, a, a jazz, classical piano, uh, church, gospel background where um, I, I kind of cut my teeth on playing organ and playing piano and playing drums in church. Um, I also was was uh, able to enroll in certain gifted or, or music magnet programs um, down in Miami where I was born and raised uh, ever since I was maybe about seven or eight years old. So music has always been a part of my life. Um, having said that, I took a, a, a very interesting path into the business, which was non-traditional compared to a lot of my contemporaries, a lot of my peers. Uh, what I mean by that is I went to college and I got a degree and post that, I actually worked in the school system, and I taught two, history for two years. Some of you may know my story uh, pretty well. It wasn't the fact that, you know, just because I, I, I got an education or um, I, I went to college and I, I came out and I had a job um, that was going to get me into the business. Uh, it, it doesn't really necessarily matter uh, what you study in school. It doesn't really matter necessarily um, how good you are in a lot of ways. Um, you can be very, very talented, but you can lack in certain other necessary areas that uh, are required for you to be successful in business, in music business in particular. But I believe that there are universal, applicable um, strategies and rules to being successful in all kinds of business across the board that are very relatable and very um, similar. So anyway, long story short, post-graduating from college, um, I, I, I went off by faith. Um, my cousin Brian Michael Cox had an opportunity here uh, in Atlanta, and he was actually successful for many years prior to me relocating here, and he would open the, the invitation for me to come to Atlanta uh, whenever I wanted to. He was like, you know, you can come here, you can, you know, sit in the studio session, you can ask any questions you want. Um, at the time, it was kind of hard carrying the nine-to-five full-time job and still be able to... Uh, take that drive from that, at back then I was living in Orlando, Florida, so it would have been a six hour drive uh, back and forth to Atlanta. Uh, but I did it. There were times when I did it right out of school uh, or right out of, out, of, out of work, leaving work at two o'clock and getting here at eight o'clock in the evening uh, just to sit in the studio for three, four hours excuse me, and leave at midnight, um, drive all the way from Atlanta back to Orlando just in time to get home get a shower, get ready for class, and then teach my students the next day, and they had no idea where, where I was or who I was in the studio with or the fact that I just saw T.I. or I saw Usher, you know, they had no clue. Um, 
But, you know, I was able to separate the two and I was able to still dedicate myself in the profession that I was in, but still I was able to give myself the space to explore um, my craft, my, my, my gift. And um, that's very important. You know, you want to be able to create an atmosphere um, where or you want to be able to invest in yourself uh, and create the space for you, for you to utilize your time wisely to invest in your craft. Um, a lot of times we say, well, I don't have the time to do this, or uh, I'm too busy with work, or I have a family, X, Y, Z, and those things are, are true and those are real, but at the end of the day, whatever you want to do and whatever you want to have, you make way for it, you make time for it. That's bottom line. So if you want it that bad, you will drive six hours and, and stay for three hours and then turn right back around and drive six hours within a, a, a 12 hours, a 13 hour span. Um, you will do that if if you wanted that bad. And um, long story short, I had the invitation extended to move up here in 2004. Actually, 2003, the invitation came. Um, Brian extended that invitation to me, and I told him, "Hey, look, hold on, let me let me figure some things out first. You know, I told him, you know, let me pray about it. I'm a spiritual guy. Let me pray about it. Let me uh, seek some counsel, and let me just make sure that I'm not a financial burden on you." A, B, that I'm not here just on a free ride and, and C, like, you know, I'm here on my own merit, like on my own talent, you know what I mean? So I took a year uh, and deferred my checks. And what that means is every two weeks in a, in a nine to five job, as you guys know, normally the, the pay, the, the pay uh, time frame is about two weeks. I took less uh, or, or I had to withhold a certain amount from my check. Um, and the, the amount that, that they withhold accumulated, um, uh, um, you know, over a time period, over a year's time period, actually. And in the summer of 2004, I was able to pull from that money that I saved and relocated here, here in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Um, um, even, even though I really had, had a place, place offered, offered to me to stay for free, free I was like, like, you know, you can stay here, here at, my, at my place for free. I still was like, you know what, no, I'm going to pay him rent, you know, just because... It's not about me having to pay him. He didn't, he didn't say you got to pay him, but it's about me investing in my craft, investing in what I believe was my future and my calling. Um, long story short, within the first couple of weeks, we did a gang of records. We did a gang of tracks and a gang of songs, and I got my first placement within that first couple of weeks. Uh, matter of fact, it was Destiny's Child from uh, – it was a song called Bad Habit uh, on Destiny's Des – Destiny's Child last album, Destiny Fulfilled. And really, the ball kind of kept rolling after that. You know, within that first even few weeks time frame, um, I, I came up with, you know, me, Brian, and Adonis came up with "Say Goodbye" for Chris Brown, which is the number, which is my first number one Billboard number one record. And we continued and worked and worked and worked throughout the years. And one thing you'll know, and at least I know after being successful at this for a while, is that you're gonna have new goals. You're gonna have new things that you're trying to attain. So there's no such thing as quote unquote making it and then that's it. You know, everybody has a dream to make it in the business, in the music industry, whether it's to be famous or to have a song on the radio. But even when you have that, if you really have that burning desire, there's something in you that's gonna make you and drive you forward to keep, you know, and keep excelling and keep building on your career. And that's the point where I'm at now, building on my career, continuing to build my legacy. And being able to give back to you guys. Um, some of you are on here, you are already in the business. Um, whether you have a, a hit record on the radio or whatnot, I think this webinar is going to service a large uh, diaspora of people. People that are just starting out, people that don't have a clue what a quarter note is, and people that have been making money in this business for years. It's going to satisfy that. And we would like for you to engage. I'm going to give you some information about what my five initial pillars are to music business success. And then after I do that, we can take questions and then interact with you. And anything you want to know, I'm here for you. Uh, and hopefully I can answer all of your questions. And if I can't, I promise that I'm going to go back and, and find out myself. But at this point, before I go into my five pillars, I'm going to ask Andre if he has anything else to say. Uh, and if not, then I'll, I'll, I'll continue to go on. I see some interaction and some engagement. I don't know if you've been looking over there, Andre. Yeah, I've been checking it out, checking out the Facebook posts. Again, the Facebook post is where we'll be taking all of your questions. So Facebook.com slash Music Business Success. All right. There's a lot of questions in there. We're not ignoring your questions. We're, you know, we're going through right now. Kendrick is going to give you guys some very, very important information. And just 
fill up the Facebook post with your questions, and we're gonna we're gonna move forward with the questions once we get to that portion of it. So, um, oh yeah, getting a delay now from the feedback. Excuse me, but you know, uh, I don't I don't have anything to add at the moment, so you can just go ahead. I just, I'm just concerned because people are saying they're having trouble hearing, and then they're saying that there's a delay. They're saying that there's a delay, so we, we, we don't want to stall too much, but we want to make sure that you guys hear us clearly, and then it's not uh, a delay. Um, not sure why that is. And yeah, all the questions are going to be asked on Facebook, and um, we're going to do our best to answer. So, um, having said that, there's a couple of hashtags and a couple of... Um, follow, I guess, directions that I want, to, I want to give to you guys. Make sure, first of all, that you guys follow the Twitter and Instagram uh, of both my name, at Kendrick Dean, and Music Business Success. Um, make sure you log on to Instagram if you have it, and follow that. Follow Kendrick Dean, and follow at Music Business Success. Tweet about it. You can tweet about this webinar right now as we go live. You can tell your thoughts. You can say, hey, just wanted to give a shout out to Kendra Dean. I'm on the Music Business Success webinar live right now. You know what I'm saying? My name is yada, yada, yada. Shout me out and I'll retweet you as soon as you sent it. I'll retweet everybody. You know what I mean? So at Kendrick Dean, at Music Business Success whether it's Instagram or Twitter, and then go on my Facebook page and Music Business Success Facebook page where you can post your questions. You can go on my Facebook fan page and like my Facebook fan page. Um, and any questions that, that you, you might have, it, there's, there's, there's really the sky's the limit. That we, we're in a very interesting time in the music business where um, you know there's a lot of digital happenings. There's a lot of digital new new media stuff. That's kind of exciting. It, it, it initially, the internet kind of scared a lot of people away. Um, you know, a lot of illegal downloading has kind of affected the business in an adverse way. But I feel like we're in a very, very exciting time in music and creativity all around because we have the opportunity to make the difference, to make the change, and to come up with whether it's a new media format that's protected from being downloaded. Or, or, or to come up with um, the answer to not being able to easily get record deals or not being able to uh, sell albums and wh whether that's you know come up with your own label there's a lot of independent artists that are making major headway major headway um, in the last few years uh, and they've done it uh, largely you know completely independent like with, with, with the, without even a major uh, label in play um, really solely independent maybe they have major distribution but that's the great part about where we are in music because that means anybody with a laptop and talent and common sense and, and some business uh, uh, savvy about them has a shot you, you really have a shot you know there's, there's nothing to stop you there's no label to stop you um, and that's what I tell people a lot of times um, when they ask, well, well, how do I get my stuff heard, or how do I break into the business, which is kind of the general question of this webinar. But at the end of the day, the business is already open for you. That's what I really want to drive home. It's there for the taking. Because of the Internet, you have a wealth of, of, of audience and fans that are you know, available to you that you have access to, whether you have YouTube or Facebook or Twitter. You're engaged with people all the time, and it, it only can start. It only needs to start with two, three people. Don't feel like because you don't have that many numbers, you don't have that many followers, that you know the whole world is crumbling down on you. Take the time, keep building, and keep believing. You know, start and build the philosophy, build the business philosophy, and build the creative philosophy. Two things: a business philosophy and a creative philosophy. What I mean by that, I'll break it down. A business philosophy is, of course, the way in your beliefs of, of how you engage in your business. Whether that's, okay, my business philosophy, for example, is that I do my best to answer all of my emails and phone return all of my phone calls in a certain time frame in the day. 
between 12 and 1.30. Anytime before that, I'm not answering. Anytime after that, I'm not answering. You say, well, Kendrick, what does that have to do with music? It has to do with time and time management. And if I don't do that, I won't have the time and the freedom to be able to do what I love, which is music. So that's a part of my business philosophy. Another part of my business philosophy is I personally, um, at the stage that I am in my career, I don't, um, I don't chase after you know opportunity that you know I feel uh, you know I don't feel it's not worthy to be chased after and as such. You work hard for things, yes. You put in the effort to to decide where you're going to put your energy and place your energy. Um, to excel, but a lot of times what, what happen is we spend so much time trying to chase and the things that we try to chase are things that are fleeting. They just, you know, it's a cat and mouse thing. I don't do the cat and mouse game. I put in the energy and I put in the effort and the hard work into things that I believe that can turn, turn around and pay back. And that doesn't necessarily mean monetarily, but I make the calls and do favors for people that I know that will look at uh, have my, my back when it's time that I need a favor. It's that same type of philosophy. The effort that you put in, you should be able to to say, I expect this to come back. That's the one thing I really love about music. And just to go off a little bit more on the creative side, anything in any energy and time that I put into music, writing a song, playing a piano, making a track, it's going to give it back to me instantaneously. And it's going to give it back to me in an incredible manner, uh, with with complete love and without judgment. Music is non-judgmental. Whatever I put into my art, that's going to come back. So even if you don't have a friend to support you or your family to support you or to say you're dope, let your music talk to you. Let your music say, you know what, man, you're incredible. Because when you listen back, you're going to feel something. You're going to feel something inside. So is everybody kind of paced together? Are we here uh, in line and everybody hearing each other and um, there's no delay. I think everybody says the delay is good to go. So, you know, I mean, I guess there was a delay with a couple people. Uh -huh. And I've had other uh, attendees say that they may need to refresh their page. So if, so if you're having a delay, refresh your page. Other than that, we're going to continue to push forward. So, are, are you still Yeah, yeah, there? yeah. We can, we, can go, we can go forward now since everybody. Oh, thank you guys. Okay, I, I see. I see your response is good. I think everybody is right on on, on point and in line. So I want to break it down as, as far as what my five pillars are, uh, or at least give you give you guys five pillars. There are more than five pillars that I adhere to in my business, and I feel like they contribute to me being successful. And these are not in any particular order, um, but. One of the pillars, or the first pillar, and if you're taking notes, I encourage you to, but I think one of the main pillars in why I've been successful is because I know and understand the importance of building good relationships. I know how to do it, and I understand the importance of building and maintaining good relationships in the business and outside of the business. I don't separate, you know the business and outside of the business and say, okay, I only need to make good relationships in music business and not in my personal life or only in my personal life, not my music business. The reason why I don't is because they both play on each other. If I have a terrible personal life, my business life is going to suck. If I have a terrible business life, my personal life is going to suck. So it's important that we learn how to build relationships. Um, you hear people say it all the time. That hold on a second. Is that a phone? Yeah. You can move it. Yeah, I moved it. I got yeah. it. You can you hear people say all the time that the business is built on relationships. It's all about who you know, not necessarily what you know. And to a degree, that's very true. That's why it's one of my pillars. Now the question is, or maybe, well, how do you build relationships? Well, I mean, you can build relationships by seeing somebody out and and somebody you want to talk to and be like, hey, look. I'm, you know, I know who you are, or I admire your work, and you know, my name is such and such, and you know, I would lo love for you to have the opportunity to either sit with you or you can just listen to my music. And I don't want to necessarily take your time, but here, here's my work, etc. Here's my contact, etc. But here's the thing: 
There is some gray area in that. And what happens is sometimes either A, we get a little nervous to approach people, or B, people say all the time, well, I don't necessarily want people coming to me randomly and pushing their music on me because I'm trying to chill with my family. I'm trying to chill with my boys. So the important thing to know when you're building a relationship, at least from scratch and then, you know, you know, kind of cold calling somebody, to, so to speak, is that you have to be conscious of their personal space. A, you got to be conscious of the time that they're going to grant you, even if it's only 10 seconds. And you have to be respectful of that. What shows respect other than consciousness? What I mean by that, respect for someone's time is being prepared. It's one thing to ask a celebrity, hey, can I take a picture with you? And they say, yeah. But if you say, can I take a picture with you? And you're like, oh, snap, I don't have my camera. Let me go run and get it. They're like, are you serious? You know, so you really got to be conscious of being prepared. Don't ask to take a picture if you don't have a camera. But in, in terms of music, don't ask somebody to be able to listen to your music or to tell them that you're an artist or you want to, you know, hopefully, you know, connect with them without having your music ready for them to hear. Even if it's a business card, be unique and be different. Even if it's a business card with a with a barcode that that they could swipe on their phone. They could, you know, all these Androids and iPhones, you can scan the business card on their phone and all of a sudden they get a free download of your music. Take that idea. That's yours. You know, take that idea. Whoever wants to use that, do that because that's so convenient. You gotta remember, time is 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 limited with professionals, business professionals of all kinds, in, in limited time. So you have to be able to get them quick and show them that you're serious. Show them that you're innovative. If somebody walked up to me with a business card with their face on it, a great photo shoot and a barcode and they say all you got to do is scan this with your phone and it's a free download, I would be like, I would really be impressed. And I would be like, you know, I want to I hear what they got to do, what they got to say. Let me interject on that for a second. Like, you know, we go to a lot of events all the time, and, you know, I'm, I have a really good memory. I remember faces. I don't always necessarily remember names, but the biggest thing is I remember business cards. So when people have their faces on the business card, I can automatically associate them with, one, whether or not I heard their music and I wanted to hear more of their music, or two, whether they had a good disposition or not, you know, you got to be careful about how you approach people. If you approach people with a bad disposition, where your, your body language and mannerisms are kind of jacked up, I mean, you can really put people off sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's true. And I, I noticed uh, while Andre was talking, I looked over here um, at some of your comments. Some of you were quoting me, which is great. If you want to quote and tweet, I'll retweet it. You know what I mean? Want to hashtag music business success at Kendrick Dean? Quote it. You know what I'm saying? While we're doing this live, so I'll retweet it. But yeah, it's it's very important to come correct. That's what a lot of people like to say. Come correct. Be conscious of the time and do what you can do to squash them nerves. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, if you you're saying, and I want to be a superstar, I want to be an artist, I want to be a songwriter, I want to be a producer. Your nerves got to take a back seat. You can't come to a executive saying, "Oh, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm ready to sing, or uh, you know, I'm a little shy," because they, they, you're asking them to potentially invest millions of dollars in you. They're not going to invest millions of dollars in someone that doesn't have a personality. So, before I go to the next pillar, let me go back into what I just said about their investment. Um, a lot of people think that it's just about talent when it comes to signing a record deal or becoming famous. I'm here to tell you that it ain't just about talent. There are a lot of talented, super talented people, more talented than, the, than a lot of the ones that are out here successfully that haven't even gotten a chance to be heard or gotten a record deal. So squash that in your mind about it being about talent right now, or at least solely about talent. And don't feel no pity party because you might be super talented and then you don't have a deal, you know, or you don't have an opportunity for people to hear you. I know a lot of talented people, some of them, they feel bad because they, they, they're down on themselves because they're like, well, this person is successful and they're not even half as talented as me 
and boo, boo, boo. No one cares about that. You got to get a thick skin in this business. It's not just about talent. It's about what are you selling? What's your market? What, what, how, how are you different? How are you relating and connecting with the demographic that your music is supposed to be for? If you're connecting with them on a certain level, that's that's exceptional. Then any exec, LA Reid, everybody is going to be like blowing your phone up because you're going to be you're going to be the one that has the key to success. You're doing their job, so to speak. All they have to do is pull together the records because not only you got the talent, but you have the, uh, the, the 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 cultural touch. You know what's happening in today's world. Your music is resonating. You have fans, so it's it, it's a new business in that sense. Um, not that it didn't matter how an artist developed prior to getting a deal, but it's so much more important and significant um, that the artist is developed to a certain level prior to either in, uh, getting the deal or even having those types of conversations. That's what labels look for nowadays. They want to see what your Twitter numbers are like. They want to see what how many likes you're getting on your Instagram. Post even if you have twenty thousand followers, they really want to see what, what's the engagement of your followers, not just the fact that you got numbers, but how are they engaged and how are you engaging with them. So I encourage you, independent artists, speaking to you, to have a presence, a constant presence online. Whether it's having an organized YouTube channel, um, Facebook is important. Having a Facebook page, which is Facebook is highly underused and very powerful. Um, whatever you have, make sure that they're all consistent with the brand. I get tired of seeing, you know, certain certain um, people that aspire to be, whether it be producers, writers, or artists, that have a Twitter name that's, uh, you know, Big Timmy Timmy Yo. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> one two five, um, or at Big Timmy Yo one two five. A Facebook name is Timmy the Yo of uh, yo yo entertainment or whatever Facebook and then Instagram is something totally different why are you confusing the market you have to look at yourself as a business why would I have separate names for my Twitter my Instagram and my Facebook it doesn't make sense everything is Kendrick Dean why because everything is analytical analytics Google Analytics everything that, that every time somebody searches Kendrick Dean all of them all of that's gonna pop up my Instagram's gonna pop up my Facebook's gonna pop up my Twitter's gonna pop up and chances are they're likely to like those pages or follow me and everything that I do is accessible to them. It's like them coming into my house. You wouldn't say come into my house but I have like 10 different uh, ten different entryways and I don't know which one is the main door. You know what I mean? You got to give people the, the main door and show them this is who I am. That's what labels are looking for. They're looking for artists who know who they are, who know what their brand is and their brand has a ring to it and don't ever put if you're an artist don't put 23482 or numbers after your um, after your at, at, at size whether Instagram Twitter if you're an artist um, get, put your artist brand name and that's not an insult or a disrespect I'm trying to say it to help you artists put your artist name you know and, 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 and whatever name you want to go with it market with and then run that all the way through all the way through the second pillar I want to talk about is organization and strategy um, and it, 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 it goes back to what I was saying about um, my business strategy and time plan uh, time management how I have you know a certain hour allotted in my day to return phone calls and to return emails etc um, it's important to be organized with your music from a creative standpoint uh, whether it's okay I'm gonna spend three hours today studying music videos if you want to be a, a music video director or I'm going to spend five hours a day vocal training or two hours practicing my piano organize your time organize your time and have a strategy as to how you're going to pursue your craft how you're going to pursue being successful in the business whether you're like I said an artist a songwriter or a producer make sure you organize that that organize your 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 Facebook and organize your YouTube to where people can have easy access to it um, put on a Google alert uh, and, and key it to your your email address so anytime your name is mentioned online you get a, 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 a inbox saying your name was mentioned on this website 
have organization, have a have a sense of, of, of order with your business, even if it's only you. You can do it with just you. Matter of fact, it starts with you. The the other people that are built or, or that come around you uh, and are, are part of your organization are are moving on your drum. They're your organization because you organize them to be. You know what I'm saying? They don't come in and say, oh, well, I just know what to do. They need leadership. And as an artist, as a producer, as a writer, as an executive, as a graphic designer, as a, a film director, a video director, you are a leader. You are a leader. And that's that's very important for us to, 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 to grab a hold to and let that sink in. Um, one of the next things, it kind of flows into the, to the next pillar, number three, is building your team. A lot of people talk about having good management. They talk about having good attorneys. Um, they talk about having good business management, etc. Those are very important. But that's only one part of building the team. There's also a personal team and a creative team. In other words, keeping people around you that's going to be honest. Whether it's family or friends or a family member or a friend or another artist, another songwriter, people around you that's going to be honest about your craft and that's going to tell you, hey, that's whack. <laughs> you need to come, come again. Or that's hot. People around you is very important. You know, um, I, I feel like you are the identity of the sum of all of your closest friends. They say, I think that the, the adage is that your, your closest five friends, you are that, that identity. But make sure you keep people around you that are more talented than you, that are more business savvy than you. You know, when I came up, I was fortunate to come up with a lot of very successful musicians. Uh, people from uh, Raymond Angry, who, who played with Yolanda Adams and Silk and, and, and Barry Whipple, you know, very successful, successful musicians. Um, uh, uh, E-Class from, from, from Po' Boy down in Miami and, and very successful business people, people that knew, you know, the industry. I was fortunate to have that as, as an access to me. But not only that was it accessible, I took advantage of it. I asked them questions. I would stand next to the organ while Raymond was playing and I would look and I'd be like, man, how did you do that chord? How did you do that, that transition? Be a student. So that's a part of building my creative fold and my, my team from a personal aspect. It also goes into just general friends that don't know anything about music. You need good support around you, whether it's parents or whether it's a girlfriend or wife or husband. Or, or whatever, you need a great support system around you, people that believe in you, but people that will tell you the truth, and they're not afraid to tell you the honest truth, even if it hurts. The second part about your team is, yes, you do need good management, you do need good attorney, you do need uh, good um, musicians and other people that are on the creative side, uh, and you might wonder, well, I don't have a manager, I don't have an attorney, how am I going to make it in this business? Everything happens within its place. When I got my first placement, I didn't have an attorney. Um, I didn't have a manager. Matter of fact, the majority of my career has been self-managed. I've been self-contained. A lot of people don't know that. I've managed the majority of my career just uh, towards maybe for like a couple of years I had a manager, but I've, I've been able to manage my career you know, on my own. You know, Everybody can't do that. I'm not advising that as a general thing. Everybody can't do that, but what I'm, I'm, I am doing is I'm speaking to the person that doesn't have a manager that's like, man, I got to get a manager. I got to get a manager. Not necessarily. You may, but not necessarily. You know, a, a manager will do things like helping you stay organized and in order, making sure um, if it's a business manager, making sure your bills are paid on time. Um, if, you know, if you got kids, making sure that, that, that and you're not married to the, to, the, to, the, to the father or the mother. Making sure that those checks go, you know, where they need to go. Making sure your income taxes are paid. All of that stuff is great for a business manager, um, a personal manager, or or, or or a day to day manager. Make sure that your music is heard. They create opportunities for your music to be heard and for you to be, uh, for you to collaborate with other people, for you to collaborate with other writers and other producers. That's a good personal manager. They have good relationships with labels. A good manager has. Good relationships with A&Rs, which stands for Artists and Repertoire, label execs, other creative uh, ma uh, uh, writers and producers, and as well as artists and other managers. That's what a good manager does. He, service, he or she services 
uh, that need for their client. So outside of management, legal is important that you get a good legal team because after you have accumulated so much success in the business, you're going to start seeing opportunities and you're going to start seeing some challenges. Your opportunities might be publishing deals. You may get somebody or a company that says, well, we, we love these records that you have uh, already released and we know you have so many amount more records coming that is in the pipeline and we want to do a deal with you. And they're throwing numbers at you, they're throwing percentages at you, and things that you've never seen before. And to secure or to protect yourself from being, you know, um, tricked or, or getting a bad deal is you need to have a good attorney. You have to have a good lawyer to look over that contract. So outside of the personal manager, the business manager, the attorney, your family, your creative fold, um, those are important in, in building that team. Another thing I want to kind of touch lightly on before I go to the next pillar. We actually kind of getting low on time here. Uh -huh. um, so I definitely I want to try to get into these questions. Like this is the, the biggest thing. So okay. I know you I know you had to hit the, the hours time stop. Right. Whatever. Right. But we're pushing up on quarter to four right now. All right. So, can, can can I wrap it and then go? I'll go fast. Yeah. yeah. Okay, just, to, just because we're in the interest of time, let me let me kind of go quickly because I definitely want to get to your questions. Um, I wanted to talk about working within your own community. Um, in other words, a lot of people are like, well, I'm a songwriter, uh, but how do I get on? First thing is look for producers and songwriters in your neighborhood. Look for it through Facebook. Find them. Google your city. Producers. Look for studios. Go buy a studio and intern. Be available to the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? In other words, interning at a studio or interning at a label or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Even if it's being somebody's personal assistant, it's going to allow you access to other people that do what you do. You have to be around it to be able to take advantage of it. So don't ever think because you don't have a producer or nobody to make you trash that you can't make it. Go find that person. And then it's best to build that team from your community within. That's super, super, super important because once you start to build your brand from inside, from within your community and you got fans within your community, labels are going to take notice of that. Um, the fourth and fifth pillar, pillar is the fourth is to study your craft. Um, study the greats. Study different genres and study uh, different, different eras. You know, at the end of the day, a hit is a hit and there are elements to a hit no matter what genre, gospel, pop, country, that's consistent. Great melody, relatable top line. Those two elements are consistent with every hit. Great melody, relatable top line. You could have a hit record that the artist is not really the greatest of singers. So listen to a lot of the successful songs from great producers or top 10 records. Billboard has it now where you can Google um, Billboard Hot 100 list 1996, 2001. Google that. Please do that, and you're going to see the list of top 100 songs at the end of the year. And then what I want you to do is you don't have to listen to all 100. Take the top five. Download those songs. Buy them on iTunes. Listen to those songs and find a similarity what made those songs work that year versus what made the top five songs work 10 years down the line and bring the similarity together. That's how you're going to be able to create the new music, the new stuff. Uh, because you know the formula by studying it that way and you're studying um, songs and, 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 and the, the writing styles of the greats. The fifth and final is find your own niche. Please, please, if there's something that's popular in the marketplace, a style is popular in the marketplace, go completely against the grain. One person, off the top of my head, there's a lot of people that do this very well, but one producer that did this extremely well is Missy Elliott. She always went, or Timbaland, they always go against the grain. That's why when their records come out, it's like, oh my gosh, did you hear that new Justin Timberlake? Did you hear that new Timbaland and Missy? It's because they're going against the grain. They're not worried about what radio is playing. They're worried about, yes, what DJs are spinning, because what they're doing is they're listening for how DJs are blending these records, and then they're going back and they're creating a unique sound that they know can blend with the mix that DJs are doing. You know what I'm saying? So that's important. Don't just settle for doing a type of genre, not to down a genre or a style of music or a style of writing just because your favorite producer writes like that. Let your favorite producer at least be 30 years in the game ahead of you, you know what I'm saying, before you start biting their style a little bit. 
You know what I'm saying? Because it becomes kind of an insult. Be unique. So that's it. Without going any further, because I want to take take some time to answer all of your questions. I really, really appreciate you guys for being here. And we have another portion after this that's uh, that's uh, we're gonna announce and, and make available. And, and Andre is gonna give a little bit more details to that. So you know, let let's get to the uh, let's get to the questions here. I'm actually just gonna go straight down the list from. Uh, the Facebook page really quick. Uh, let me just pull up that window. Sorry about that. Alright, so there were quite a few questions and we appreciate that you guys. You know, we really want to be able to get you guys the information that you're looking for. So um, can I see the question? Let's see. Um, I'll put them up over there for you. Yeah. Yeah, we got a ton of questions here. I'm just looking for the bottom, guys. So Jonathan says, my main question is how to get your music heard. I have a SoundCloud and a YouTube, but I find it very difficult to expand my fan base beyond friends. Um, I have a social media background, so I actually want to jump in on this before Kendrick does. And um, social media is very important. I mean, it starts out with your friends, and that's why Facebook is actually such such a huge platform to be able to expand outside of your friends. Because when you have when one of your friends likes something that's on your Facebook that's on your Facebook page, their friends now see that they like it. And then it just kind of goes viral from there. There are no other social media platforms out there that do the same. Um, Instagram, I mean, you can dig deep and find out what, you're, what other people like, but that's kind of a headache. And with Twitter, you know, somebody has to retweet it, you know, which is kind of the same thing, but it, it's not the same as Facebook. So, Jonathan, to you, I would suggest, you know, getting your music out there on Facebook creating a Facebook fan page and actually, you know, putting a lot of time into that to be able to grow your fan base. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I definitely want to add something to it. Um, outside of the, because he, he seems like he's doing some good stuff with the SoundCloud and whatnot. Outside of that, uh, just figure out a way to, to, to be different as an artist. Um, in other words, what I mean by that, you might want to host a, a concert in your in your no, local neighborhood, a free concert um, or, or you know, a can drive, a, a can food drive. Now Thanksgiving is coming up, free concert, and call a local newspaper up and say, "Hey, look, I got, I, I'm doing this free concert in my neighborhood. It's a can food drive. The, these are the attendees because I sent the invite on Facebook and I sent the invite in the streets, and these are the people that came to the website and said they're going to be there. So we're guaranteed to have 300 people. All right, and their their the entry is a can can food, food item, and I'm young. You know what I'm saying? So you guys need to support me. You know what I'm saying? So do things like that and do a performance for them. And then the news station is going to be there and they're going to they're gonna shoot you for free doing your performance. Next thing you know, you have access to millions of homes, you know what I'm saying, in your city, depending on where you, you're from. And people will be able to come and enter into that concert. Another thing is you could do um, little promo items, T-shirts. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't necessarily have to all be... Well, everybody drive to the SoundCloud. How do I get them to drive to? You got to give, build the port for them to get to the SoundCloud. Whether it's having your website on your T-shirts, um, you know, handing out a flyer at that free concert, you know, that has the website with the SoundCloud. Everybody that goes to the SoundCloud or wherever you're hosting your music, that they're, they're registered. So you have their email address and for future. Um, Engagement. So the next event that you have, make sure you log the first and how many numbers of people that attended, and make sure you videotape it. And then the next event, do the same thing. And then after a while, you have a collage of events where you can edit your video into a five to ten minute short sizzle reel and show an exec. See, this is how my fans have grown over the years. Started off, start from the bottom. Like now we here. Started off with fifty people coming to the show. Now I got five thousand. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm in, I'm in these streets or whatever you want to say. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a way to do it. Just be creative with it. All right. So Darius, he wants to know how important it is to have his own LLC. Guys, when you write your questions, let me know where you're from too. Um, 
how important is it to, to have your own LLC? Well, it's important to be organizing your business. There, there are several ways to do that. You don't necessarily have to have an LLC. You can have a corporation, but it's it's up to what, what makes sense for you uh, at the time in business, whether it's LLC, whether it's be uh, uh, incorporated, et cetera. What, what makes the best sense for your financial situation? What makes the best sense for um, how you're structuring your taxes? And the best the best persons to to discover or that answer with would be a business manager or an accountant, someone who specializes in particularly music uh, business, uh, and they'll be able to advise you whether you want to do LLC, whether you want to be incorporated, etc. And at, at the same time, it's important to also retain and have rights to whatever name of the company that you have. So yes, it is important. If it's a production company, you don't want for your company's name to be stolen or somebody else to use it years down the line because you didn't incorporate it or protect it. So it is important. Um, it's not like a song that you can do a poor man's copyright and self-mail the song back to and that holds up in court per se. So if you've got a unique name, if you've got a unique artist name, you want to definitely uh, seal it and, and, and you, you might want to talk to a trademark attorney as well to actually trademark that name. How you know Michael Jordan has Michael Jordan trademark. Tim Tebow has Tebowing trademark. So no one can use that without paying him. You know what I'm saying? So you, if you feel like that's the name, invest that money to save it, to retain it. Um, let me get to Erica's question because um, I can't seem to copy it off of the uh, the chat here. So Erica says that she's a freshman, a music major at Clark Atlanta University. And she's currently trying to acquire an internship, and she was wondering if we do that sort of thing. We're actually looking for an intern right uh -huh. now. Um, Erica, what um, what specifically in music are you trying to do? Because Kendrick and I are looking for an intern as we speak. Yeah, and and then also, Erica, you can actually tweet if if we don't get a chance to get your response back, you can tweet who you are. And, and reference that, you know, your intern looking tweet, hashtag myself and tweet Andre and uh, Music Business Success. Reference that you're a freshman at Clark looking for an internship. And we can know, we can know you know, who you are from that and, and Andre can make arrangements to get your, your information, get your, your resume and see what exactly you're looking to do and how we can help. We got London, UK in the house. I want to shout out the UK. I know we have... Um, we have uh, Amsterdam in the house. Where else? Let me see. Ron, Ronnie has a question that I love. Um, that's Ronnie Johnson. Ronnie says, has the music business finally taken a change back to lyrics and not so much club and dance songs? You know what? Um, that's a difficult question to answer, but I'll answer it in a couple ways. I think because, in other words, because I've been... I've been doing great lyric, great melody songs all my career. I haven't stopped. And I feel like I'm a part of what the music business is. Um, I'll put it this way. There has been a lot more attention paid to artists doing real records with real soul and real melody. Um, a lot of throwback sounding 80s records from you know the Blurred Line record to... Uh, even the new Jennifer Hudson song and you know a lot of Pharrell stuff a lot of Daft Punk so there is an attention drawn back to um, music music um, I, I don't think those people have stopped I don't think Pharrell took a break and stop stop doing that type of music it was just the right time and place that's what he was on Daft Punk at, at the time was working on an album and they were on the same thing and they were just like well why don't you come in and do the album with us and that's how that magic happened so I feel like everything is cyclical so to a degree yes it does and it has come back um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you know it's gonna be forever that way because everything in, in music is a cycle you know when rock was really popular you know uh, rap wasn't as popular now rap is the new rock and you know rock is like a ghost you know what I mean so everything has its moments, it has its time. Um, but I'm glad that there are a lot of artists that are, are out there that are um, putting forth great music 
and not worried about particularly numbers. And the thing that makes them able to do that is because the internet, because they're independent. They don't have to take a seat or seek counsel from a label, per se, a major label. They are their label. People like Fantasia, she has an incredible album. I was listening to that album today. I really, really love Fantasia's new album. Um, people like Lettucey, they're, they're making uh, uh, Jennifer Hudson, they're making uh, Kelly Rowland, they're making great sounding music. And it's current. People like Miguel, he's, you know, making great sounding music. And it's unique, it's different, but it's still new age, R&B, great melody, great top line, great metaphor, great artistry. And the music itself, the song takes you on a journey. And that's what we should be aiming for as songwriters, as, as artists, to take our fans uh, on a journey every time they listen to our work. All right, so, um, hmm, Sherelle is saying ASCAP or BMI? Both are great companies, whichever one you're closest to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a CSAC writer, by the way, so um, I'm going to always champion CSAC. Uh, I have friends that are um, both affiliates and executives at ASCAP and BMI, respectively. Um, they're very good companies. Both of them are very good companies. They're... It's, it's about whichever one you're closest to at the end of the day. You have great relationships at one, um, go with that one. You know what I'm saying? If that's, that's where you know you can get your answers and get somebody on the phone, go with that one. All right. Kai says, when starting out, you want to um, you want to make a good first impression and aren't quite certain um, where you are in terms of being ready. Um, at what level do you expect exp is aspiring creatives to where'd I go? To step up in the room with the with the pros, you know. So repeat that question again. Basically, what she's saying is, is like, all right, you know, obviously when you when you start out, you know, some people who are starting out are uh, starting out. Like, at what level, you know, should someone expect to step up into the area with the pros? Can I jump in on that for a second? Go ahead. Um. My producer Rick Rude. Um, Rick, 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 Rick and I met when we were 19, and his first placement was on Buster Rhymes. So, you know, some people unfortunately just have it. You know, I mean, I remember at the time I was writing songs and producing and stuff as well, and I was kind of in the position of just starting out trying to learn. Whereas he was the same age as I was, and he was incredible. I mean, he was in high school doing music for television shows. Back then, it was uh, the WB Network, you know. So, I, I mean, I guess, it's, in my opinion, is just where you are creatively and who you come in contact with. Because I might hear something and say, oh, I don't like that. That sounds amateur. But then Kendrick might hear something, you know, he has a whole other vision, and he can take it to another place. So that starting out, like, don't don't think that just because you're starting that, you know, you're just automatically dropped to the, the bottom of the barrel. I mean, in my opinion, it just all has to do with the quality of what, you, what you're writing or producing, as well as who you connect with in order to make it happen in the business? Yeah, I mean, what I got from the question, uh, you, you know, it's, it's like, at what, at what point, at what point do you feel like you've uh, either, either need to step it up or you feel like you're there? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all growing. Like, I, I don't ever feel like I'm there. I, I'm always learning because the, 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 the creative landscape is constantly changing. So I don't feel like, okay, well, I got it. I got all the answers. I'm always studying, and I'm always pushing myself harder. So if, if, if you're starting out, yeah, work ethic should never change. You should always be you know, beating on your craft even when you make it, even when you become successful. Um, how do you know you're there? Uh, that's another question. But how do you know you're there is 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 – by feedback, really honest feedback, of, of course, by, by you know, hopefully in, in, in your case and everybody's case here, they'll, they'll be at a, a place where somebody, someone that really can be an influence in their career hears them and likes what they do, but if not that person yet, 
than the people that are around you, other musicians. That's why it's important to keep people that are much more skilled than you are around you because they'll tell you if you're there yet. They'll be like, man, man, I'm learning from you, you know. Nah, oh, man, you got that. They'll be, they'll give you those little things, you know what I'm saying, when you're around people that, you know, are incredible musicians, producers, songwriters, artists, etc. That's what you got to do. Surround yourself with even greater, and then you'll understand your greatness even better. All right, so uh, I, I skipped a question earlier on purpose um, because it kind of had to do with the fact that we're looking for an intern. But um, since we already touched on that, CJ had a question. He said, what is the best way to get a studio internship and get more studio experience with the professional producer? Go to the studio. <laughs> Take your resume. Go to Doppler if you're in Atlanta. Go to... Uh, um, um, I don't know if the Hit Factory is still up in Miami. Um, go to uh, uh, Chalice in L.A. You know, go to the studio, whichever studio is still in New York. Larrabee in L.A. Yeah, just go to the studio, take your resume, knock on the door, ask for the studio manager. Meet the guy and say, hey, look, you know, my name is XYZ. Here is my resume. I don't know if you're hiring interns, but I would be honored to be an intern here for free, even if it's just one day a week, even if it's to clean the kitchen or clean the bathroom. All you need is an hour in that building one day a week because you're going to run into somebody. You got to go to, you got to go out. That's the best way to really do it and, and be in the action. Be in the action. Nothing, nothing, uh, the, the business doesn't move per se in the, in the creative room in the studio, but it moves when you engage out and go to where these execs have to come in. You know what I'm saying? They got to come in the, in the doors in the studio. They, you know, you know, the artists have to come in the doors in the studio. The producers obviously have to live in the studio. But beyond just building relationships with a producer, being in a studio, you're going to see other writers, other producers, executives, A&Rs, et cetera. Cater an event, volunteer at an event. If CSAC, ASCAP, BMI is hosting an event, um, you know, at a, at a venue, go to a rep at, at CSAC, ASCAP, or BMI and say, look, I'd like to volunteer my time. You know what I'm saying? And then there you put yourself in the environment. You put yourself in the atmosphere um, of other people that are of, uh, of higher level than you that you admire. And next thing you know, you go, hey, look, here's my, my business card. It has a, a barcode on a scannable barcode. Uh, my name is such and such and such. You know what I'm saying? And give them a quick, a, a quick skinny. And then they scan that barcode, they listen to your stuff, and be like, man, you know, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I would love to sit with you. Do you have a card on you? And if they say, no, I don't, I say, okay, cool. Well, you know, I'll, I, 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 I'd love to sit with you. But maybe I could have an email address. You know, people are funny about their personal number or your assistance number. Maybe ask them for that first. That eases people up a little bit. When you assistance. say, let me get your, let me get your assistance number. Um, or email address because they, they they feel like you respect their time. Okay, well here's my sister's number. But and, and, and two, let me touch on this. Um, the assistant is the guy you want to know because when you forge that relationship, one day that assistant who's already in the building is more is likely to be the head honcho. Forge those relationships early on in the game, you know. Connect with the assistants. Connect with interns and stuff like that. Don't necessarily try to go to the man at the top at the beginning. They don't always have time. Forge those relationships with the assistants. Okay. We have a I, – I, I'm going off the beaten path because I want to talk a little bit about, before we go to the next question, about sync, music for TV, video games, um, etc., films, stuff like that. A lot of those placements, not all of them, but a lot of those placements happen through your publisher. The reason why is because the publishing company has a big department dedicated to sync, film, TV, video games, etc. Um, and, and you can go and explore those avenues that way. Secondly, if you don't have a publishing company, there are studios that specialize in that. There's a studio here in Atlanta called Soundbite um, that specializes in music for, for commercials, music for TNT, music for Lifetime, you know what I'm saying, little blurb here and there, music for movies. They specialize in that. Go to that studio. 
make an appointment. Call say, hey, I would like to make an appointment to intern. Or I'd like to make an appointment to see um, the head a and Sit with them and play them your music. You know what I'm saying? Particularly someone that has a business that they do and that's how they make their money. And of course, they would accept great talent that does that. So that's one way to get it heard. Um, if, if you can't get, a, get it through a publisher, if you don't have a publishing deal, find the studio that does that. Doppler is a studio in town that's known. A lot of you guys seen the TLC documentary. They did just about all of their songs in Doppler. Doppler is a studio that I first worked at when I moved here between Doppler, excuse me, between Doppler and Stankonia. Um, but Doppler is a real popular studio. They also have voiceover in Doppler. Um, very big on voiceover in the daytime. So go there. You know that's how you can get get familiar with that type of stuff. And then also shoot your own short film or partner up with someone that does a short film or does video games independently and do the music for it. Do the music for it and then post it online. And that'll be your entry into the business. That'll be your example. All right, so let me go to Shante. And we deal with a lot of writers and stuff, so I'm skipping up, guys. I'm sorry, but I, I kind of think this, this takes care of a lot of other questions and stuff that I see as well. Um, it says, how do you gain effective placements as a songwriter? Many, many people make a promise to get your music heard, but how do you get your music heard? Uh, excuse me, how do you get your music to the right people so that you can get heard? Okay. Well, you have to put it out there. <laughs> and it, it's, it's one thing. Okay, I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound like, oh, yeah, yeah, all right, of course. But if your music is good, somebody's going to hear it. Trust me, that can do something. Even if they can't do what you need them to do, if they just know somebody else and know somebody else and know somebody else, it's going to get in the right hands. So, in general, you know, a lot of people on this chat also have SoundCloud, etc. That's a way. That's a way, but that's one way. You have to put all of your coins out. and You have to put all the efforts out. Have a SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Go out to these conventions. Go out to these events that these PRO performing rights organizations have, and have your music ready. That's see, what if you're self-published? You see that? Huh? She's asking, what if you're self-published? Yeah, yeah. That, that's that, that's the same, Nicole. Yeah, but that's that's what you do. You you go out regardless if you're self-published. You you, 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 you you The bottom line is you want your material to be heard. Uh, is that is that the same question in connection to the first question, or is that something yeah. totally different? Uh, this, 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 it might be totally different. Oh yeah, it could be. I'm not sure if you guys, any of you, are still, the, still what is, in the delay. Yeah. What is the question though? If you're self-published, I don't want to start taking questions from over here because it's gonna get confusing. Yeah, yeah. I definitely. And we're running short on time. Yeah. So are are you wrapped with that? Because uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, it's as a matter of fact. It's just like I said. Put your material out there, and someone was someone is gonna hear it, and always be ready. Always be ready. That's how you get it heard. Just by make sure you're ready when the opportunity happens. A lot of times. All right. So Landon Johnson, he says, as a music producer, I have networked and made connections, but some circles are reluctant to let new people in, which you know it can appear that way sometimes. Right. Uh, what is a gain? What is a good way to gain trust or valuable connections without overwhelming or bugging them to the point where they lose interest in working with you? Here's the thing. Um. If they're not interested, don't worry about it. Move on to the next. Don't waste your time. Don't hang your head on one person. Well, it's just, it, and it goes back to what I said in the beginning, is I don't chase. You know what I mean? If they're not interested, move on. I get no's every day. I get no responses from some people, too. I get people that don't like what I, what I create. Executives that I have great relationships with, that I've made hit records for. They're not going to like it all the time. So don't feel down on yourself because someone is not, you know, responding back to you or it's hard to break into that little circle. That shouldn't, that shouldn't, you, you, all your cars should be in that one deck anyway. Or all eggs shouldn't be in that one basket anyway. So continue to be persistent, but be persistent in a wise way. Know when to back up. How do you know? You know if they're not, you know, responsive. If they're not responding to your... To, 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 to any of your, your uh, pursuits or your, 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 your calls or your, your emails and they're not responsive and they got the music. So, uh, Carmi, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I apologize, but uh, she's asking, 
Hold on a second. What about females trying to get into the to the industry and taking the necessary ste steps to be taken seriously? Well, the thing is, talent should supersede everything. Male or female, whatever your race is, whatever anything is, talent should supersede everything. And uh, unfortunately, we live in a world that's very judgmental, and we live in a world that people tend to think a certain way about somebody's ability just because they're female, which is unfair. There are a lot of very successful females in the industry, and not just executives, creative producers and songwriters in the industry. Um, you know, you can't force anybody to recognize what you are or who you are. That's impossible. The thing that I can tell you is that you have to continuously believe who you are and continue to pursue. And if a door slams in your face and if this person says no, if they disrespect you, go to someone else. Leave that person alone because you can't force them to see or hear what you got. It ain't easy. Just as it's not easy being a woman, it may not be easy being old, it may not be easy being a minority, but that's no, that's no excuse. Um, talent should supersede everything. And if you're good, somebody's going to hear that. Shoot, you could fake somebody out. Uh, Puff Daddy faked, faked the whole world out when he put just a, a, a top frame half face shot of Kelly, uh, Kelly Price, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> even though everybody knew, okay, she's, she's a, a pleasantly, you know, a voluptuous woman, you can see, but their whole trick on that is that they didn't want to show her whole body because they thought it would look a certain way. But what happened was, is people bought into her voice, you know, granted, you could see that she wasn't slim, but still, it wasn't showing, you know, her whole, you know, physique. They bought into her voice. So, I man, use an idea. Man, maybe even just do a, a cover of your CD, uh, of, of your CD, of your examples of your work with dudes on it. And maybe we're thinking of dude doing it, and they be like, man, this is crazy. I want to have a meeting with you. Let your brother answer the phone, acting like it's, whatever you got to do to make it happen, do it. In other words, as long as it's legal. Cool. Let's see. We got Landon. Let's get a couple um, more. Yeah. Uh, let me see. What advice do you have for a new manager trying to break in? Uh, excuse me. Trying to break a phenomenal artist, trying to meet producers um, that make music versus making beats, mm -hmm. which is hard in Atlanta. Right. Like well, it's it's so funny because just as you're looking for producers that that are creative and musical. There are creative producers that are looking for opportunities to work with artists. So um, the, the best advice is to be on chats like this, to be at seminars, um, to continue to do what you're doing, because I'm sure you're doing a great job in letting people know about your artists, and I'm sure they have some music. But there's a lot of people there. There's, there's close to 100 people, well, 71 people in this chat room right now, and a lot of them might be musician-based producers. Um, to have them submit stuff to you, you know what I'm saying? Um, put an APB out on, on some social media network or go to the concerts and the showcases of different individuals or, 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 or different organizations that might have music seminars and meet some other creative entities and you'd be surprised what you find. Find somebody. Like a lot of these artists back in the 90s, they developed internally. Boys and men, granted, yes, they, they, they start off Bib 10, you know, uh, Michael Bibbins, but their creative circle was that, you know what I'm saying? TLC creative circle was Dallas Austin. They came in, you know, that doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be initiated by the label. They come in as a unit, you know, and a lot of producers and a lot of artists are doing that nowadays. They have their own producers that they're coming in the door with. They're coming in with their own team. So it can be done, and it's, it's been done successfully a lot of ways, so I would think that that's a good way to go besides just continuing to hope that an established producer would say, okay, well, I see this guy's talent, and I want to do a deal. That can happen, but don't be discouraged if that doesn't. There are, def there, there are definitely other avenues for you. Cool. Um, let's see here. Real music here. See, these people are yeah, they, they, uh, um, Darius Minds. Check them out. And, and again, you know, like like I said, I encourage you guys to put your shout outs and stuff in the post. I really need to be able to see the questions that our people are asking pertaining to whatever question we're talking about at that particular moment. So please 
whatever, if you want to do your shout outs and stuff, put it inside of the Facebook post so that we can keep that chat line clear. Um, hey, what's, your, what's your Twitter, Andre? My Twitter is I am manager. I am manager. And, and follow, follow him. He will follow you. If you want to know how to get in contact with us, in any interns or whatnot, follow him and he will follow you. All right, so Mr. Music Reeves is asking, what are some steps for, produce, for producers to make sure their business is done properly, i.e. contracts, getting paid, getting placements, etc.? So step for producers to make sure their business is done properly is to make sure that you hire the right people to look over your business. A, um, use what you have try your best not to have an attorney that does real estate look over your, your music contract or an attorney that does uh, you know uh, child custody cases to look over your music contract have the experts look over your music contract if there's money involved you can get somebody that might be willing to do it for uh, a bartering type of situation or a delayed uh, payment type of situation because you have money that's coming in so the, the, the best advice is to find the experts to look over your work. Look over it yourself, have an understanding of it, and some literature that you can look at to have a general understanding about music business. Um, is everything you better know about the music business by Kashif, and all you need to know about the music business by Donald Passman. Those are two great books that you should look for reference. They don't give you everything, and they don't teach you how the business really is, but they teach you elements of the business that are very important. So along with hiring, and securing professional personnel, people that are pros at dealing with contracts and, and publishing deals, know what you're dealing with yourself. So when you go and have these meetings with these professionals, they might skip something. You're like, you know, what about this? And what about that? Oh, I understand what you mean. So besides educating yourself, make sure you surround yourself with, with people that are experts in the field. we got time for a couple more questions. Um, let me see. We're pretty much wrap up. There's some other questions in there. People had uh, multiple clay questions, duplicate questions and stuff here on Facebook. Um, let me see. And Thez, um, in today's climate pertaining to the music business, how does one stay afloat as a writer-producer mm -hmm. with the decline of record sales due to piracy, illegal downloads, and such? It's called, it's, it's called being creative in your pursuit. In other words, a lot of writers a lot of young writers and a lot of young producers chase the same project. If Beyonce, which is what she is, was working on an album, you better know that every major producer is going after her album. Plus, every major successful producer and current producer is already being called in for her album. Not to say don't try for Beyonce. Definitely try for Beyonce. But there are other avenues. There are independent artists that have small budgets that are signed to labels with major distribution from companies like E1, you know, that distribute major artists like Boyz II Men and like, you know, there are other artists that are independent like Tyrese, who is, is gold, and he has his label deal, Voltron Records through uh, Capital E of Mine. They're independent opportunities that everybody is not trying to bang down the door, so the competition uh, is not as fierce. So make your, your name there if you have to. Um, just to get you some money and stabilize. A lot of the established producers that have, you know, been on major projects and there are a, a lot less uh, projects coming out now, they've decided to focus on either indie or a different genre where they can do more uh, in terms of the number of songs that they can contribute to the album and overall cover what they would normally get for two and three songs that they would normally do on a major album. So. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, the, it's the way you look at it, you know what I'm saying? It's the way you twist it and look at it differently, but it's there for the taking. There's just different ways to go about it and, and just, you know, make it, make it a, 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 a pursuit that's easier on you and not hard on you by pursuing, um, pursuing projects that are, you know, a little bit easier to at least get heard by, you know what I'm saying? And, and shoot, you never know. You might re, you know, introduce a success, one successful artist that you know maybe had a hiatus and now they back with a hit. You know you might be the guy that or, or guy that wrote that song for them. So I mean, there's, there's a ton of questions people are asking at the end of the day. How do you get your music heard? That, that's what we're here for. And 
I'm sure you guys have seen the offer that's popped up where what we're going to do is anybody who wants to get their music heard, songwriters, producers, if you're an artist, you know, Kendrick and I are right here, right now, live doing listening sessions. Okay, now in order to do to get your music heard by us right now, you get a live critique about what you're doing. And this may even be your big break. You know, Kendrick and I may hear something that's like, God, like this joint is hot. We might be able to place this joint right now. So if you see the offer, you know, um, you should see an offer right there. And if you want to get your music heard right now, that's definitely the way to make it happen. And the reason why, let me let me double on that. This offer is is while the webinar is free, and, and I wanted to provide this opportunity. This offer does come with an investment. Um, the reason why we do it, or at least I, I decided to do it this way, is because uh, at the end of the day, we go and we invest on anything that we want anyway. We go to the mall and get what we want. You know, but we rarely ever invest on ourselves in our career. Hundred percent. And if we really believe in what we do, um, as artists and as songwriters and as producers, we would invest in that, and we wouldn't be afraid to to, to really put forth um, that 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 capital to make that happen. Whether it's taking dance lessons, whether it's taking piano lessons. Um, so this is a unique opportunity. If you don't feel like you're ready, don't submit. This is not a forced thing, um, but if you feel like you're ready, um, I'm definitely here and available to listen to your music, and I'll give you personal uh, critique and feedback. And beyond that, it's it's about creating this opportunity for you to possibly, um, you know, finally get placements if you feel like your records are ready and at that level. If I hear something that's hot, we work it. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. So, um, but I do respect everyone's and I do respect everyone's ability. So some some of you may not be able to do the investment, which is understandable. You know, there are many other opportunities, um, you know, where, where you could take advantage of going to seminars and hearing uh, or playing your music uh, and, and getting people to get feedback and, and running into somebody and, and hopefully they'll hear it. But this is a guaranteed unique opportunity, one, a, a, a one-time chance. Uh, opportunity where you can actually get get engaged in feedback. I can give you feedback directly, one on one, if you're interested. So, like I said, you don't have to. There are other opportunities in the future, but if today you feel like you're ready, this opportunity is available, and I'm here. So, you know, with, with that being said, again, I'm going to post the the link again for you guys right now, and if you want. To get your music heard right now, you get a full critique, and this may be your day. This may be your your opportunity. A lot of y'all are probably watching this webinar right now with J's on your feet, you know, with with uh, Louis Vuitton bags and stuff like that. You have to invest in yourself. All those other things are very superficial, you know. You can't be the first one in line to go buy a pair of J's, but then you don't want to invest in yourself for your music and say. Well, I don't know how I can get the opportunity to get heard. Like, this is, there are not very many people who do this. And uh, Kendrick is definitely a respected, you know, icon in the music business right now. If you're not familiar with who he is, then, you know, definitely check his resume. Google him. You know, myself, I've been in the, bu in the music business for 12 years, and I've had quite the successful career. And uh, we're here. To, we're definitely here to help, and we're looking for new, um, new people to work with. So I want I, I, a couple people have a couple questions there. Like, how many you submit? I want to submit. I want you to submit the best song. The best song. I give you full critique on the best song. Secondly, I saw another question. Does your music have to be copywritten? Please, I hope it is. Uh, they, they, knowing the legalities of the industry, as soon as you create your music or create anything in the United States of America, it's technically copywritten. But I would hope your music has some type of protection. You do have protection, uh, um, you know, uh, as soon as you create it. You know, what I mean, whether uh, you send it out to the Library of Congress, whether you do poor man's copyright, it's your property. Um, this is really just designed to 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 be a critique. Uh, and, and potentially an opportunity, you know, for someone to actually work with me. Um, 
So that that answers a couple of questions I've been seeing uh, coming down the down the line. Um, shameless plug: Make sure you support that Tamar Braxton album. It just dropped a few weeks ago. The next single is Pieces, a record that um, I produced along with Brian Michael Cox and Tech Beats. Um, that's going to be her her winter single. And make sure you support that song. Um, it's written by Seven Streeter. Um, uh, Anthony Franks, M. Bass, um, uh, Ashley. There's a, there's a few other writers on there, but it's a great record. If you haven't heard the song, it's called Pieces. Uh, make sure you go get that album, download that. Um, also, as we wrap and, and, and wait for people to, to sign on, I'm also getting to work, work again with uh, Q Parker from 112. Uh, I produced three, three records on his first solo project that came out two years ago, including um, Show You How, which was his, his top 15 single. Um, we're getting ready to gear back up and go in the studio and, and work on his second album, um, due out for release hopefully by the spring of next year. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Other things, if you don't do R&B music, I do country and gospel as well. I'm going to Nashville. Um, this weekend, and I'm actually writing with the lead singer of Augustana, um, and I'm excited about that. Country Top 40 records, Country Top 40 music. So if you do that, don't hesitate to, to, to send that and submit that as well. Um, other than that, man, I, I really appreciate you guys being here on this webinar. Um, you know, I really appreciate the questions, and I hope I was able to help you in some way, and uh, I definitely hope I'm able to hear from you and and able to hear your music and see your career succeed because that's what it's about. You know, if you don't succeed and I just have all the success, then, you know, we're not here doing our job because we're supposed to be here to help each other and help each other grow. All right, so be sure you guys follow us on our uh, on our social media, Twitter, at Kendra Dean, mm -hmm. at I Am Manager, at Music Business Success, um, Instagram, at I Am Manager, at Kendrick Dean, um, at Music Business Success, and uh, you know on, on our Facebook pages, you know uh, music on Facebook.com slash Music Business Success and Facebook.com slash The Kendrick Dean. So um, you know we'll we'll see if anybody uh, is signing up here for our uh, listening session. And uh, other than that, man, you guys, you know. We thank you for attending. You know, it's always good to be able to pass on knowledge to someone else. You know, that's that's what we're here for. So, you know, you know if anybody doesn't have anything else, you know, um, we thank you for attending and um, come back to the next one. Anything thank else? you. No, uh, I'm I'm good. I'm good, man. This has been real. It's been great. Um, Somebody asked about ASCAP, BMI, and how do you become a member. Um, I gave the website to those uh, organizations. They, they definitely have a, a link to where you can uh, uh, get in contact with the people that are, are, are involved with their membership. CTAC is more of an invited by member type of deal. But, you know, those organizations are, are, are you know, all of the organizations are great, like I said. And just being attended to a lot of their events and make friends with people that are with those organizations, ASCAP and BMI, CSAC, and their executives, and just be around. Thank you guys, man. I, I hope this information is, is priceless to you guys. Um, I know I shared it honestly, and a lot of the things I shared with you were the reasons why I've been a success, and I, and I pray that I'm, continue, uh, I'm able to continue to be a success and to be an influence. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, and don't forget, hit those hashtags. Hashtag Kendrick Dean. Hashtag, hashtag music business success. And um, I thank you guys for uh, attending. You don't, don't, don't see the link. You don't see the link? One, One second. second. Yeah, make sure you you can quote me on you know all of the social media. I'll retweet you. Um, make sure we get this popping because I want to make this bigger and bigger and bigger and better. I want to be able to travel to some of your cities and do one-on-one -on -one workshops. So let's get this going. All right, guys. Uh, I'm out. I'm getting ready to go into the into the next chat room for those who are, um, you know, enrolled in, in in the listening session. 
so I can give you my personal critique, and we can go from there. Peace. All right, have a good one.